Support for Just Seen It comes from Fandor, dedicated to supporting independent films and filmmakers. Movies from around the world are available at fandor.com slash ptv. Fandor, all for film. Catherine Black is a famous neuroscientist. I study extraordinary brains so I can learn about normal ones. She hides the fact that she has bipolar disorder from everyone but her psychiatrist. While her job requires her to help others, she struggles to help herself in Black Box. Hi, I'm Sean here with Liz and Rachel, and we're going to talk about Black Box, the new ABC television series created by Amy Holden Jones, who was the screenwriter for Mystic Pizza. We've all just seen it. Liz, what do you think about Black Box? I think the show had a lot of problems, and I can't pinpoint one specific area. I mean, I think it, the casting wasn't perfect. I think the writing's not so great. I think the idea for the show isn't that wonderful. So I, in general, I think it was disappointing. For me, the biggest issue is the writing. I don't so much mind the casting, but this feels like a rough draft to me. We have a show where our main star, Kelly Riley, is a neurosurgeon, and she's also bipolar. Well, she's a neuroscientist, right? Oh, well, she's both, There's Liz. a difference. To me, this feels like a rough draft. I don't mind the premise so much, but a lot of the solves for these people's issues seem a little bit far-fetched. The dialogue feels very rough. Some of the dialogue's really bad. <laughs> Well, it's called Black Box. Black Box is supposed to be this term for the brain. I had trouble finding the show's Black Box. Let's just say that much. I think House is the major influence on this show. It wants to be like that. It's executive produced by Brian Singer, who was uh, he directed the pilot of House. So this idea of the fact that the top doctor may be slightly crazier than her patients. But the problem is with House we were kind of in on the process. We were with the doctor, and he was discovering information about what the disease was or what the problem was with one of his patients, and I felt like I was along with House on the journey. Here, it's like, okay, we're going to tell you what the problem is, then we're going to tell you what the solution is. <laughs> right. There's an A story and a B story. There's always two patients in every episode. The A mm -hmm. story is way too over-dramatized. It's yes. like, oh, there's a problem, but it's in the dark. Oh, and you can't use metal. That is the worst line. It is the worst line in the whole show. You mean we have to operate in the dark without our scans, with no electricity? And no metal instruments. And no metal instruments. Right. And he says it in this way that's super stiff and off when you're like, whoa, we get it. This is a high stakes moment. Right. So the A, a story is over-dramatized, and then the B story doesn't get any time whatsoever. It's like yeah. somebody has a problem, and then at the end of the episode, they're like, ah, we'll just live with the well, problem. Well, you don't get to it's know fine. the patients. You have someone who can't see colors, who's a makeup artist. That's the guy, yeah. yeah. Okay, and then he's got a way of distinguishing between colors by the end, but you can't actually distinguish well enough that you could still be a makeup artist. It's like, just because you know the difference between yellow and red doesn't mean you know which shades are not going to clash. Right. There's a lot of problems with story, but I think there's a lot of problems in performance, too. You look at Kelly Riley, who is amazing in flight. Amazing! Like, best part of the movie was a scene that she had in a hospital staircase in flight. And then it's like, it's Did just she dance so... the Charleston in the staircase? <laughs> but it's as if someone saw flight and saw that amazing scene and was like, oh, she's in a hospital. I'm just going to put her in another hospital see what happens and turn it into a whole show. But it doesn't work. I, I could buy the bipolar elements of her. I just think that her right. performance and the show seems to go from zero to 60 so quickly. So melodramatic. That I just don't, I can't organically buy anything that's happening. with. I can't buy the fact that some sometimes this character in one scene is super depressed and super crazy and the next scene is dancing on light, well, light posts. It's but like, I think that is part of it. I mean, I've, I've grown up with some bipolar people in my life and I think, you know, that that is part of it and there is always that temptation to go off your meds because you don't like that sort of flatlining feeling. That part, I think, wouldn't feel so zero to 60 if the supporting characters' dialogue and acting was better, because almost all of the supporting characters, the acting's not very good. They feel very stilted. Well, and I don't know if that's a directing thing where they just didn't get time to yeah, work with them. I just don't buy it. I don't buy the boyfriend character. I mean, Will, they, poor Will. David Ajala, who plays Will, I think is a good actor. I, just right. the character, I'm like, 
what really? I mean, he, he's like, he's not seriously dealing with the fact that this woman is bipolar. I mean, she goes off her meds. They have kinky sex. He's like, I kind of like the kinky sex, but you should still be on your pills. It, it, I, and then he keeps coming back, even though she's having an affair, affairs with these men in her I life. I don't know if they did actually have kinky sex. It was implied that she wanted to be a little bit rough with him. But then he said that he liked that side of her. Yes. But he, he didn't liked, look like he liked right. that side of her. <laughs> right. so depressed. It's just that the acting and the script and the director, it's all melodramatic. It just goes yes. to those extremes. And I, I do agree that it's like, yes, it could be emulating the the idea of being manic depressive, you know, but it, as a viewer, I'm watching it and I'm just, I'm being pushed and I'm being pulled. Amy Holden Jones has been off the grid for a while. I mean, maybe that's why the show isn't polished. I don't know. She started out, she's been in the business a long time. She was Martin Scorsese's assistant on Taxi Driver. She was an editor on Hollywood Boulevard, which was an early film in the Roger Corman studios. And then she wrote Mystic Pizza. So uh, clearly she's been around for a long time. She's been around a lot of talented people. She herself has shown talent. I, I, something went wrong when she made this. I don't know what it was. Black box has so many problems, they might name a disease after it. My diagnosis? Skip it. The show was just really dark and hard to watch. I'm gonna have to say, skip it. This is a mediocre show. Kelly Riley's pretty good in it, so stream it. Looks like our votes add up to half of a ticket, which is a skip it for Black Box. Black Box? Why not rent something on Red Box? There's a time and a place for flashing people, and it's not right now.